Well, good. Well, let, let me preface this by saying that, that these are not in a particular order. Um, all of them, I think, are important to success. Um, and, and at the end, so you guys be paying attention. I'm going to ask you which ones of these you think you need the most work on. Okay, or which ones you think are the most important. Um, so I, I want to get your feedback when we're all done. But let's start out with act like a business. So, and, and for you guys, this is a, um, a challenge because you have so much other stuff on your plate um, that you kind of fit real estate in where you can fit it in. But, but I want you to imagine for a minute, what if we did that with McDonald's? And some days McDonald's opened up at three o'clock in the afternoon and closed at five. And other days it was from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then uh, might open at six in the morning and close at two o'clock. What, 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 what do you think what would happen in that sort of a situation? You wouldn't have any customers. You wouldn't have any customers. And, and think about your employees. You know, uh, I, I know she already, you, you kind of have the challenge because your schedule is really inconsistent. Um, your, yours revolves around the, the, the flight schedules, right? Yes. And it's not the same hours every single day. It, is that, is that day. easy for you or hard for you? It's hard because yeah. one, you may start out on the day and then you may start out in the evening. So uh -huh. it's. And, and it makes it hard for you to make plans, right? It is hard for me to make plans. Yeah. And, and so that, that, that's one way where act like a business comes in is, is what, for you guys, what I want you to think about is figure out what your hours are, okay? And it may just be from eight in the evening till 10 in the evening, Monday through Thursday, and then 10 to three on Saturday, 10 to three on Sunday. Do the best you can with it. Uh, and I know yours is gonna be tough, Sheikha, but um, try and pick and, and, and use your calendar and say, okay, this week, these are my business hours. And what happens when business is open? What do we work on? Business. Business. Yeah, right. And, and, and it, that, that, that's challenging and that's tough. You know, other things about business, and, and so some of this is kind of, you know, devoted to the ones that aren't necessarily a dual career. But like for me, my day doesn't start until I take a shower and put my shoes on, okay? If, if I get up and don't take a shower, I'm going to have a very unproductive day. Okay, so it's, it's Saturday. I don't have to get up and take a shower. Um, if I just get up and, and throw, on, throw on a shirt, I might spend half the day on the sofa. But if I take my shower, I get myself dressed, and, and importantly for me, I put my shoes on, that, that mentally to me is I'm supposed to be doing something. Okay, I'm, I'm dressed up and ready to go. And, and while it may not be take a shower and put your shoes on, we all kind of have our own little routines that, that this is how I show up to work. And do you think you're more inclined to do really good work when you're wearing your, uh, your, your jogging pants and a tank top or when you're a little more dressed? When do you feel like a professional? Is it just me that I don't feel very professional and <laughs> take top? And so most I, people, it will be probably when you feel more, when you're dressed. Yeah. And, and, and so for you guys, I just want you to keep this in mind that a lot of us have routines. For you, it's kind of the opposite. You've been at your job and you come, your, your other 40-hour commitment 
and you come home, if, if I change out of my uniform, whatever that means for your other job, what did we mentally tell ourselves? That you're done working. That you're done the working. Day is over. Yeah. And, and so I just encourage you guys to think about that, that, that a better solution for you, and you have to find the solution for you, is maybe I don't clock out when I walk through the door. I, I go ahead and give real estate an hour. I give real estate two hours. Okay. And then when I get to take my uniform off, now my day is done. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Good. So just remember, if you, if you treat your business like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. How much do hobbies pay? <laughs> usually not very much right they usually yeah. cost us money right probably not <laughs> if, 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 if my hobby is painting or golfing or crafting or whatever it is gardening that i'm usually spending money for the pleasure of the hobby uh don't treat real estate like a hobby you've got to remember you're a small business owner and you're trying to build a business so uh so so keep that front of mind Okay. Um, second one, get plugged into your market center. And, and I love that you guys are here tonight. And, and that's, that's a great start. Okay. Um, but I encourage you guys plug in everywhere that you can. Okay. Uh, not just tonight, e even in the coaching program, the, the e Tuesday evening uh, group coachings, plug in because let, let me ask you, all of you guys have been to group coaching or, or to one of these dual career agent workshops. The day after or, or the night after we've done this, do you feel better about real estate or worse? More excited about real estate or worse? More excited. Yeah. If the, the more we're plugged in and the more we're around it and talking about it and soaking it up, not only do we learn the craft better, build more relationships that are going to pay dividends in the long run, just our energy level is higher. And, and do you think that energy level shows up when we interact with our clients? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I don't want to be down in the dumps and having a bad day when I'm interacting with my clients. And, and the more I'm plugged in with the market center, the, the easier it is for me to keep that energy up. Um, the, the, the more time I want to spend in lead generation, the more I want to get to that next level, have that one more closing, um, that's going to move your business forward. So uh, if, if you ever do have a day, double, a day off, double check our calendar. See if there's something you can plug into that day. Um, even if you can't come into the market center um, and, and we don't have a class that night, go to the, the coaching uh, YouTube channel. W watch 30 minutes of a video, okay? Uh, go back and watch the team meeting on Facebook from that week. Find some way that you're getting to, to connect with the people here. Um, and don't forget, we, we, we talked about this in the first uh, one that we did. Because of the restrictions on your schedule, um, there's going to be clients you're not going to be able to serve at a high level because you're not available when they need you to be available. Okay, They need to go look at houses in the morning. That's not an option for you. So you want to have relationships with another agent. That, that you can partner with and collaborate with to better serve your clients. And, and the best way to meet them and, and to build those relationships is, is being here. Um, so, so look for those social events, look for our, our other things we do just besides have classes um, and, and try and get into the market center in, in a more social environment as well. 
Um, and, and that's going to pay dividends for you. The next one, be a continuous student. And hopefully, I know that's why you're here today. I know that's why Sheikah was at Bold today. And you'll see down there in the, the last sentence, so take Bold and then take it again and again and again. Um, we always need to be learning in this business. Um, and, and right now, a lot of you still have a lot to learn about how to do business, uh, have a lot to learn about contracts and, and the different situations we find ourselves in. But even when you reach my level and, and you, you've spent 12 years as a student, I promise you there is still so much left for me to learn. Uh, and, and not just because of how grand the, the scope of real estate is, but real estate is always changing. Markets are changing. Uh, the, the financial market is always changing. You know, interest rates going up and down, the availability of loans going up and down, the type of loan products going up and down. Um, the, the technology that we work with both to interact with the office and to interact with our client. That's changing. Uh, what builders are doing, our contracts every year, in January and again in June. Uh, January, we get new contracts. June, we get, uh, to a lesser degree, updates to the contracts. We need to know what those changes are and why those changes are in there. And so we always have to be studying if we're going to serve our clients in the in, in the best manner, and and I know none of you uh, ever want to make a mistake that's going to hurt your client, um, you you always want to serve them at the highest level. So training and and knowing your craft is one of the best things that you can do uh, to make sure your clients are taken care of. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and keep in mind, this doesn't just have to be about real estate. Okay. We, we all need to be growing as people. We, we need to be growing as, as spouses and, and citizens. Uh, so don't just limit this to real estate. Make, make it intentional that, that every day I'm going to learn something new. Okay. Uh, read, journal do those things, okay? And, and I know our time is limited, but schedule a small amount of time uh, every single week. The, the most successful agents, actually, let's not even take agents, the most successful professionals, when, when you look at the top money earners in America and, and they, they pull them to find out uh, how much time do they spend on training, okay? When we look at the top 1% of performers, on average, they spend 15% of their work week in training. That's a lot, right? If you're a 40-hour employee, that's six hours of training every single week. But that's how they make it to be the top 1%. So I encourage you guys to do that. Look, look for those opportunities to grow. Uh, next one, have written goals. Do you guys have written goals? Yeah. Yes. Well-defined, broken out? Or did we just write a dollar figure down on a piece of paper somewhere and stick it in a drawer? No, it was well-defined, but I think before one one. Yes, I love hearing that. That is fantastic. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the 411, once you're learning how to use that 411, that is such a good tool to help you take those big goals and break them down into little goals. And, and the thing that's funny about goals is when we have well-written goals, our, our subconscious mind goes looking for opportunities for us to move ourselves closer to it, okay? Our brain's already pre-programmed to look for threats and to look for opportunities. And, and if we haven't told our brain what it is that we want, it doesn't know what opportunities to look for, okay? Except for the, the ones that just naturally occurred, you know? 
we, we noticed the cheesecake, right? <laughs> we, we, we noticed that um, um, really um, attractive um, person. Yes, yeah, and the last month, yep. Yeah. So, um, so, so our brain already knows there's things that we want, you know, to, to survive uh, and to procreate. But if, if we want a big life, we need to know what those goals are so our brain knows to be looking for those opportunities. The next one, embrace coaching. So, and, and guys, I want you to know, I am, I am here for you and not just for the classes, okay? Get on my calendar. Let's sit down. Anything that we've talked about, if, if, if we need to unpack that one-on-one, -on -one, you need help writing your goals, I'm glad to do that. Uh, you want to talk strategies for lead generation, I'm here for you. Uh, you, you want advice on how to handle a transaction, a particular customer that you can't get to take that next step. You've uh, uh, looking for a, a good person to partner with that, that is available when you're not available. Uh, I can help make those introductions. You know, take advantage of everything I've put together for you guys between the, the, the YouTube channel and the cheat sheets and all that stuff. Uh, lean on me. I'm, I'm here for you. Okay, um, you're, you're, you're paying me, right? When you have a transaction, you're paying me. So, so please don't ever think that um, I'm too busy or, or uh, feel guilty about asking for help. Uh, one, I love the help. So it's not a problem for you to call me. Hopefully you guys already feel that and know that. Uh, but, but two, you're paying for that service. And, and if we can get you to where you're closing an extra transaction, two transactions, five transactions a year, um, I wanna do that. Because not only does that help you, that, that helps me, right? So, so please don't feel guilty about doing it. And, and what, what I've put together and the resources that I put together for you guys these are the things that I wish I had had when I started back 12 years ago uh, and, and was the only licensed real estate agent at my brokerage. I didn't have anybody to lean on. I didn't have anybody showing me what to do. I had to figure everything out for myself. And, uh, and, and I have since sought out and, and learned from much better agents and, and have grown myself into what I would like to consider to be a professional. Um, I want to make that path a lot easier and a lot shorter for you guys. But if we're not talking, I, I can't impart that knowledge to you. I can't help you through those situations. So uh, please, please, please pl plug in with me. Uh, if you don't see a time on my calendar when you go to seemycoach.com, um, call me, call Mina. Um, get on Mina's calendar. If you need help with the technology, she, she's glad to do that. Um, and, and, and both of us, uh, while we can't do it every night, uh, we're, we're certainly opening the, the meeting and talking outside of regular business hours. And so we're, we're, we're happy to be here for you. Be curious and ask questions. And so um, I've, I've always naturally been curious. The, the thing that I would encourage you guys to think about is if I want to build a big real estate business, do you already know how to do that? What are the things I need to be thinking about? Well, I don't, I don't necessarily know. So ask lots of questions, lots of questions to make sure that you get the right information. Okay. Um, and when it comes to your building relationships with other people, um, asking questions, being naturally curious about them. Okay. What is typically people's favorite topic to talk about? Family, kids. No, well, you're kind of on the right track themselves yeah. right isn't that most everybody's favorite talk topic is themselves and am i wrong 
Yeah, that I think about it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And and so if if I'm asking you questions about you, Tony, and giving you the opportunity to talk about yourself and what's going on in your life, in your family, in your kids, in your work, what are you starting to think about me? You said what? A, I'm sorry. You said what? If if I'm asking you questions about mm -hmm. you and about your family, about your work, about your dreams, uh, uh, and 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 asking them genuinely, mm -hmm. what does your opinion about me become? What, what? How does that make you feel when I'm asking you about you? I feel like you're caring. You're interested in yeah. Yeah, that you're interested in me. Yeah. And, and isn't that the relationship we want to have with our clients? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I tell you that so that if you guys can be genuinely curious about the people in your world, you're going to create opportunities for yourself. Okay. But I also want you to be curious and asking questions about real estate because there, there's not a week that goes by that that I don't share a strategy, a, a resource, uh, uh, make an introduction to someone that they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea this was even available, okay? Well, the, the struggle for me is I can't think of every single thing that you might want or need to know. I've got 12 years worth of collective knowledge about real estate. I, I can't just feed it all to you in an hour and a half on a, on a what is tonight, Thursday evening? <laughs> can't give it all to you on Thursday evening, right? Um, and, and I'm not going to remember necessarily what did I talk to you about the last time. I want you guys coming and bringing and asking questions, okay? Because I, I want you to know this information. So, so don't ask one question, ask 15 questions. Uh, doesn't bother me at all. Right, write those questions down, bring them to group coaching. Hey, I was curious about this. I was thinking about this. How would this work? You know, what would you do next? Happy to have those. Stay curious, be asking, because uh, very likely there's a, there's a better way that's out there. Um, and, and one of the things that's kind of amazing about, if you think about it, the, we don't even know what the best way is yet, right? I don't care what it is. Has the best food ever been found already? Has the best medicine already been found? Does anybody have the best relationship? No, there's, there's always an opportunity for something to get a little bit better. And, and being curious and figuring out how things work uh, enables us to go finding that, that better or best way. Next, know your market. Okay, if we're going to be out there and we're going to be selling real estate, we need to know what's going on in our community. And, and that can be everything from businesses opening and closing to uh, proposed construction that's going to take place, uh, changes in road traffic, um, local elections, even what about local sports teams? Do you think that if I uh, am, am working in the Parkview High School District, that, that I ought to know if, if Parkview High School's on track to uh, uh, win the state championship in football? That'd be good information. That would be good information to have. Because if I'm talking to people in my community, is there a good chance that can come up? And if it doesn't come up, is it a good thing for me to bring up to make sure they know I'm connected to my community? Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do we stay informed? Well, when, when it comes to real estate, you know, uh, going and visiting property that's on the market, going to open houses, uh, looking in George MLS and FMLS and seeing what's going up and down in price, uh, what's changing with days on market. Um, all those are going to help us know a little bit more about uh, what's going on with the numbers in real estate. 
but I also want to know more than that. I want to know about the community itself. So if you guys haven't done it, where you are trying to grow your business, go to Facebook and, and get yourself into the different Facebook groups, the, the buy and sell groups and the, the, the know your community and the neighbor to neighbor type pages where people are sharing information. Go up, go connect with, um, like I, I follow the Snellville Police. Um, I follow Snellville City Hall. Um, I, I do everything I can for Lilburn. So like there's a Lilburn Town Talk Facebook group, okay? Where, where people are just sharing what they know. Hey, there's a business that's coming up. Here's an event that's going on. Uh, so anywhere where you can connect locally just to get a little bit of extra information. Do you, do you guys use Facebook? Do you look on Facebook? Yes. Or semi-regularly? Yeah. Well, while I'm looking at all of my friends and what's going on in their world, guess what pops up in my Facebook group? There's this event this weekend. There's this festival next month. The, the, this building is having to uh, 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 be torn down because of a fire that took there. Uh, they're installing a roundabout at this intersection. I get to know my community just by flipping through Facebook. So encourage you guys to do that. Uh, next one, be known. Okay, don't be a secret agent. Um, there are people in your world, I promise you right now, that you know very well that have no idea you're in real estate. Do any of you guys doubt that? No, I don't at all because it has happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, keep that in mind. We have got to get comfortable. And, and, and this is a tough one for a lot of people to, to put ourselves out there and be more public than, than we ever probably have been in our life, right? And, and engage with more people and make sure they know what it is we know, okay? And it doesn't have to be in your face. These are not hard sells, okay? That, and, and we'll hit this here in just a second. Uh, we'll talk about coming from contribution. You know, people don't care about um, you talking about your work and, and, and even care about offering to help them if they know you're being genuine and, and you're really doing it because you're interested in, in serving them, um, that's going to be received really well. Uh, but we've got to get comfortable having those conversations. And, and guys, I'm guilty of this. So anybody else tell me if you were guilty of this. Uh, you, you've been at a restaurant or you were at some event where people were networking and you heard somebody else talking about real estate. And, and what happened to your ears? The, the, the perk up. You guys ever hear those types of conversations? Yes. Yes. And did you go introduce yourself and give them a card? Or did you walk away and think about it two minutes later that you really should have gone and introduced yourself and given them a card? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So not picking on you because I've done it too. Um so I'm, I'm, I'm guilty, uh, but we've got to get comfortable, you know, now, now I do it because I'm really comfortable with it, but yeah, there was a time where that was a, that was a big ask for me to go talk to a complete stranger, but you close the deal with a complete stranger, um, changes the way you think about things. So yeah. you know, make sure everybody knows, um, and, and have you guys noticed the people that know that you're in real estate or when, when you're with a group of people or, or you've met somebody and they found out that you're in real estate, are they curious? Or do most people go, oh, that's great, and then change the subject? They're curious. How's the market going? They are curious. So one and a half. I always yeah. curious about what's going on in the market. I know, and, and so that's what's Yeah, I've had both reactions. 
from people. And, and you're going to have both reactions. Some are going to yeah. walk away. But, but a lot of people really like to talk about real estate or are interested in real estate, even if they're not in the market to buy or sell, they still like to know what's going on around them. And, and some of them, it's because they kind of always thought they'd make a great real estate agent and they'd like to do it. Uh, some of them like Joanne Gaines and they're addicted to HGTV. Um, so, but it doesn't matter what the reason is. The, the, the point that I'm making is if, if you guys will just make sure people know you're in real estate, people will have real estate conversations with you over and over and over again. Um, I'm in pool league. I, I play pool on Thursday, Wednesday nights. Um, and, and almost every single week, somebody comes up to me and says, you know, so how's the market going? Or, or they have a question about interest rates or something. Cause they all know that I'm in the real estate business. And, and there are some new people that are around that when somebody I know comes to talk to me about real estate, as soon as they walk away, they turn around to me and they go, so you're in real estate and they want to talk about real estate. So that, that's been a really great way for me to meet, network with people, but it, it had to start with me making sure people knew that's what I did. And hey, if you ever need an introduction, if I can ever answer any questions for you, I'm here. Not if you want to buy a house or if you want to sell a house, okay? I, I'm, I'm very non-salesy in my interaction with people, and, and I encourage you to be, too. Um, Are you saying something with me? I want to be helpful. Huh? Okay? So I'm, I'm going to mute you. Get it the way she told me. Okay. Any questions about that? That makes sense, doesn't it? If we don't tell people that we're a real estate agent, is anybody ever going to call us and ask us to be their real estate agent? No. No, and they're not. And, and I know it seems so simple, but yet we all fall victim to it. Um, come from contribution, okay? And, and if you have any hesitation about engaging with people around real estate, this, this is the one I want you to fall back to. Okay. If the reason I'm engaging with them about real estate is because I have my eyes fixed on a commission, then we're doing it for the wrong reason. Okay. Um, uh, Zig Ziglar for the longest time. And, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Zig Ziglar. He's a, 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 a sales coach and, and a motivational speaker for years. Um, and, and I believe that he's gone now. Uh, love his books, love his speeches, um, his presentations. But one of the things that he said that always resonated with me is the easiest way to get what you want is to help other people get what they want. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. And, and so understand how that applies in real estate is if I can just help enough other people save money, be more comfortable in their um, decisions that they make around real estate, okay? I've talked plenty of people out of selling their home, okay? I've talked to plenty of people that wanted to buy a home and have told them it wasn't the right time for them. Um, I've had people come to me that wanted to lease purchase and and was able to, to show them that that was not the best path for them, okay? Does it make sense for somebody that makes money on buying and selling property to tell people not to buy or sell property? It does. It does, okay? Because what Cause just Integrity is important. I mean, integrity is in your honesty. Yeah. Do they trust me now when I give them information. Yeah. Yeah, because it was never about me, it's about them. And, and there's lots of ways for us to engage with our clients and come from contribution and it not be salesy, you know? I go, yeah, hey, Sheikha, how are you doing? How are the family, how are the kids? Hey, listen, while I've got you on the phone, just didn't want you to forget, you know, I'm connected with lots of different people in our real estate business from 
landscapers to roofers to uh, plumbers. If you ever need a good contractor and you don't know who to call, call me and let me make sure I get you connected with somebody you can trust. Would that be helpful? Yes. Is that coming from contribution? It is. Yeah. Okay. What if I called you up and said, hey, Sheik, I know you own your house. Uh, Gwinnett County is going to be releasing the, uh, the, the tax assessments here in the next few weeks. Um, I want you to be on the lookout for it. And when you get it, go ahead and open it up. And if you feel like the assessment's out of line, call me and, and I'll do a little bit of research for you and give you what you need for you to challenge the, uh, the assessment and uh, maybe save you some money on your taxes this year. Would that be helpful? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did that have anything to do with me making a paycheck? No. It had everything to do with me making a paycheck. Not today. Not I'm today. To talk them into buyer selling. I want the relationship, and I'm going to come from contribution because if I give and give and give, at some point, I, I have to receive back. It's just the, the natural way the universe balances itself, right? Um, and, and if I don't get it from here, I'm going to get it from somebody else. Because you may not want to sell your house. You, that may be the house that you're going to die in. But if I could save you $200 on your taxes this year, what do you think about me as a real estate agent? You're quite knowledgeable. So yeah. I would trust you. Or I'd want you. I'll... I'll take you as a trusted person I'm going to start I would probably start start asking you questions sure. then I will refer people to you that's what I'm and looking for if I need right you there. then I'm going to use you yeah okay so so get away from that it's a sales call it's it's how can I help people if I can just call people and say hey just wanted to check in on you see how you were doing is there anything that I can do to help you today you know, that that's kind of the mindset that I want you to have on those calls. And, and if these are people we care about, and, and hopefully they are people we care about, that ought to be a really easy phone call. Okay. Um, next one, build and maintain your database. Um, there, there are people that come in and out of our world. And, uh, and, and we're in a business that we don't want people going out. We, we want to pull as many people into our world and hold them in our world as possible. And, and that gets harder and harder to do as that number grows. I can probably manage about 30 relationships in my brain and on my phone. Once I pass that number, I need help from technology, okay? If I want to be in a relationship with 300 people, 400 people, 500 people, can I manage that in my head? I can, and I, and I think I'm a pretty smart guy. So I, I need to have my database there uh, watching my back, reminding me that I haven't talked to this person in a while, uh, sending out an email to connect with them uh, when, when my life got too busy and I didn't have the opportunity to reach out and connect with them, okay? And that connection is what I need if I'm gonna build a big business. Um, these numbers are actually a, a little bit antiquated. Uh, the most recent numbers is 86% of home buyers say they would use the same agent again, and only 12% do. Okay. Well, why do 70% of people that said they would use their agent again not use their agent? Just because the agent hasn't kept in touch with them. Okay. They did a great job. And, and, and what that tells us is if the people we helped successfully that, that thought we did a great job don't remember us, what are the people that we just introduced ourselves to and gave a business card going to do? How many of them are going to remember us? Even yeah. less, right? So, so we have to constantly be touching people in order to keep our name front of mind with them. And, and your database is, is the way that you're going to do that. And, and for you guys who have another 40-hour commitment someplace, um, this is even more important for you 
because your database can be working for you to build your business while you're at your other job, right? You don't have time to send uh, 30 emails today, okay? But your database does. It's got plenty of time to do that. We just have to set the system up. And so if you haven't invested the time into building your database and getting your people on smart plans, make that your first priority, okay? That's going to shortcut the, if, if you're looking to leave whatever you're doing and come to real estate full time, or, or if you just want to expand the income that you're making from real estate, the fastest way for you to do that is to get serious about your database. And, and Chica, you saw that today in the, the exercise that, that we did about how many people in your database and, and what the gap is. You remember that exercise? Chica, did I lose you? Tony, Valerie, y'all able to still hear me? Yes, I'm here. No, just want to make sure there wasn't no problem on my end. Everybody getting quiet. All right. So lead generate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we need to be intentional with our lead generation every day. And, and while for full-time agents, uh, we say two to three hours of lead generation a day. Uh, if you don't have that to give, that's okay. You know, we're, we're, we need to give what we can. And we need to be intentional about it. So for you, it might be 30 minutes a day, okay? Um, it, it might be 15 minutes a day, and then two hours on Saturday, two hours on Sunday, okay? Divide, divide it up, figure out where it is, okay? And, and understand that when we talk about lead generation, this isn't always just phone calls, okay? This is anything that we're doing to interact with our people, okay? So this could be a text exchange. This could be inside social media uh, or, or, or direct message through your social media. We're, we're just looking to have a two-way conversation with them, okay? Um, it, it could be door-to-door. -door. It could be a networking event. It, it could be at church, okay? But we, we want it to be intentional time where we're, we're finding ourselves and giving ourselves the opportunity to have real estate conversations. Okay. And we need to be intentional. The, the, more, uh, the more we lead generate, the, the more money we're going to make. Okay. And if we don't lead generate, are we going to make any money? No. Okay, so, so it's completely up to us to control, okay? That, that's one of the awesome things about this business, one of the reasons I got into this business. Um, it's the reason I got into sales that, that actually led me to real estate eventually. But um, I used to have a salary job, and I knew that it didn't matter how good I was at my job. I could only make so much money. And I wanted a job where I had more control. The better I did, the more I did, the more money I made. And so I, I could pick my income. If I needed to make more, I worked more. Um, and, and you guys have the same opportunity. But it all starts with lead generating. If, if we don't have clients, uh, we don't have customers. Uh, we don't have income. So we've got to go find those clients. Okay, And they're out there. And for you guys with your limited time, I would focus all of my energy, if my database is big enough, on my database. There, there's no reason for me to do open houses or go door knocking or, or call for sale by owners or expired. Um, I probably, for, for the limited amount of time that I have to get to the business, I already have enough people in my world to, to, to focus just on them and drive the income that I'm looking to make. Now, if our database is small, we do have to find some other ways to how do I make more connections and get it bigger. But uh, where you guys are, if, you, if you've got 200 people in your database, 
it, it's going to take all your time just to maintain them, build the relationships with those 200 people. So focus on them. Those are the people that already know you, love you, trust you, and want to see you succeed. Let, let, let them uh, uh, occupy all your lead generation time. Try and, try and figure out what are the most creative ways I can interact with them. Because if you've got 200 people in your database, that by itself, if, if you interact with them at a high level, should generate at least 10 pieces of business for you a year. Okay. And, and, and I know right now none of you are on that, that level of 10 a year. W would that be transformative? W would making 10 deals a year change your life right now? Yes, it would. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So find those 200 people and just pour your time and energy into them. And, and the more that we do that, understand the, the better our relationships are, the easier those phone calls and easier those conversations get, right? Do, do you think it's harder to call a friend or to call a stranger? For me, it's a stranger. I'm going to talk to my friends all day long. And that's why I love this business. I get paid to make friends and to talk to my friends. That's how I grow my business. So nice. All right. Practice your scripts. Okay. And, and as I say, practice your scripts, not memorize your scripts. Okay. Um, the, the thing that I don't encourage you guys to do is we don't need to go memorize and spend a whole bunch of time and energy uh, learning uh, word for word any particular script. But I, I do need to rehearse what are the conversations I want to have with people. Okay, there, there's great little snippets in all of the written scripts. But, but the thing that I want you to take away from those scripts is a way of talking, a way of thinking, okay? Uh, one approach to handling a certain objection, okay? Um, but I've got to make it mine, okay? Because when, when Trey calls Trey's friends, who does Trey's friends want to talk to? Right, right. I got to sound like me. I've got to be me when I call and talk to them, okay? Or else, are they going to think I'm being genuine? Are they going to think I'm coming from contribution? Are they going to feel connected to me? No, okay? But I need to be practiced and rehearsed enough that those conversations come easy to me. Okay, and, and I'm not uncomfortable answering questions. I'm, I'm confident in my answers. I know what I'm talking about. Um, and I know what I'm going to say so well. I don't have to think about what I'm saying. I, I get to put all my energy and my effort onto focusing on what they're saying. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yes, it does. We've got somebody else popping in here. So. Glad to have you joining us, Heather. So you're, you're, you're part way through. So we're, we're, we're getting closer to the end now. <laughs> so, but uh, we're glad to have you here. Um, so the next one, uh, time blocking. And this is something that's going to be really important to you guys. So when we talk about time blocking, we're, we're talking about exactly what it sounds like. We're blocking out a, a, a chunk of time on our calendar that we're going to devote to one important task, okay? And, and lead generation is the natural one for us to talk about, okay? Because have any of you ever gotten to the end of the day and you laid down in bed and you thought, my gosh, I, I had three extra hours today. I have no idea where that came from. Did anybody ever have that experience? 
No, right? Life, no. <laughs> life Never. fills our calendar up every day, doesn't it? If, if we don't decide what goes on our calendar, life will decide what goes on our calendar. Who is more That's likely true. to make better decisions about our time? Us or everybody else? Us. Uh, oh my God. us. Our yeah. And, and so we have to be really intentional and carve out some time so that we're able to do the most important task, okay? If, if I need to follow up on some emails and, and I need to check and make sure this paperwork got here, I don't need to carve out time for that, okay? That'll fit in the in-betweens of stuff, okay? But if we talk about lead generation and, and I wanna sit down and I wanna do an hour of phone calls or an hour of texting, or um, I want to, uh, set up my Facebook post for the next month, okay? Put that on your calendar, okay? Um, it, it belongs there just in the same way that an appointment with your doctor belongs on the calendar, okay? You, you, you've got to go see your uh, uh, oncologist, your cancer doctor, right? And you got an appointment with them Thursday at three o'clock. Are you going to miss that appointment? No. No. Are you going to make the decision that, you know what? Uh, just one more episode of Squid Game. I uh, can see about going to the doctor tomorrow. No, you're going to show up, right? Why? Because it's that important to you, okay? Um, and, and, and if your business is that important to you, if the <clears throat> income that you can make, the lifestyle that that income mm -hmm. gets to give, okay? The, the charity you get to support, the college you get to send your kids to, if that's important to you, um, the, the things that are going to get you there belong on your calendar. Okay, and, and, and the idea behind doing chunks of time, be it two hours, uh, even as little as an hour, but, but preferably two hour or three hour chunks are more powerful. Um, and the reason we say focused on the most important task, okay, and, and trying to do one thing. So like with lead generation, do you think it's more effective do you think I have better conversations? Do you think I have better results when if, if I were to make 10 phone calls today and I did one at 8.30 and one at 9.15 and one at 11 o'clock and, and, and two at 12.30 and, and one, if I scattered that out through the day or if I sat down and, and from 6.30 to 8 o'clock, I made those 10 phone calls back to back. Which one of those do you think was more efficient, more productive, and, and more likely to wind up with money in my pocket? The one that you time block for 6.30 yeah. to 8 o'clock. Yeah. And, 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 and coincidentally, it probably took me less time doing that. Okay because I had everything set up. If, if I am just gonna make one phone call, well, I've gotta get ready for that phone call. I've gotta think about what I'm gonna say. I've gotta find the phone number. I'm gonna make the phone call. And, and then if I'm gonna do things right, okay, I, I had to open up my database and, and put a couple of notes in there and set a reminder for the next time I'm gonna call, okay? Well, all that stuff that I just did, I had to do again when I made my next phone call. And then I had to do it again when I made my next phone call. Whereas if I did it in a chunk of time, well, I pull out my list of people I need to call, get their information. I make call, 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 call. And then I update everybody in my database, okay? 
I didn't have to log into my database 10 times. I logged in one time. I didn't have to go find phone numbers 10 times. I'd go find them one time. There's an efficiency to doing it together. And then as far as the quality of my conversations, if I'm having a similar conversation each time, do you think those conversations got better as I moved through those 10 conversations? Was I more comfortable and more natural and, and you know, just crushed, crushed my dialogue or script uh, that you want to call it, making them all at one time? Uh, how was my focus during that time? Was I appropriately focused on the customer or was I thinking about what I'm going to have to do next? Do you guys see the power that, that time blocking gives you? Yep. No? And let me tell you one other way that you benefit from it. If you put it on your calendar, okay, and it is really important to you, well, when somebody else asks you for your time, what do you get to do? So sure. let me look at my calendar. That is exactly right. You get to tell them no. You get to tell them, I already have an appointment on the calendar. Okay. I, I don't have that time available right now. You get to say no. Okay. When it's not on your calendar, what are you likely to tell them? Yes, or okay. I'll see. Yeah. And is that helping you get where you need to be, where you want to be in life? No. no. Okay. So, so empower yourself that way. Time block your most important stuff so that, so that you can keep yourself moving forward. The next one, and this is a challenge, and, and I know every one of you have felt uh, the, the, the pressure of and, and have had the thought that you're not getting the results that you want. Okay. Um, and, and I want you guys to understand that, that you have to be impatiently patient. Now, we could have conversations around right now. It, it, are you not where you need to be because you haven't done the things you need to do? And, and that's probably a contributor to it. Okay. But even once you start doing that activity, okay, if, if I know I have to make 10 conversations a day, I have to have 10 real estate conversations a day to have a six-figure income, okay? I wake up today and I have 10 real estate conversations today. Am I now on track to make $100,000 income? You are on track because if you consistently, consistently do it, then you will That's the thing. something will be. Is I have to consistently do it over and over and over again. And, and three months in, though, am I likely to have made 25000 Yeah. I, I would say no. Okay. Um, it, it's going to take a while to ramp up. And, and that's where we see agents get really frustrated and they give up that, um, let me show you, and this is going to be a little hard to see because I wish I had a whiteboard. So, so this is the way things really work in the real world. So if, if we look at, here's, um, time going this way and here's our results going here so we have our results and we have time okay and we say okay I want to be here making a hundred thousand dollars in a year okay well our brain tells us that that trajectory looks like that can you guys see that a, a, a line? up through our goal right here. I'll put a big star up there so you guys can see the goal. We think that it's supposed to follow a line going up here, but that's not what happens. Our, our, our trajectory 
looks like this. Starts out slow, and then we start to gain momentum, okay? And things get better and better and better, okay? And, and I'll give you an example so you understand why this is. So let's say we're making our 10 phone calls a day that, that we were using in our example, okay? Well, as I, I start moving along, I get three months in, okay? Well, the only people that I have in my world are the people that I talked to in the last three months, okay? I don't have anybody at three months that I talked to six months prior that was gonna need me in six months. I don't have anybody in my world that I talked to a year earlier that was gonna need me in a year, okay? So if I keep making those calls though, I'm still gonna find people today that need me today but I'm also going to have people that I talked to three months ago that were three months away, six months ago, six months away, 12 months ago, 12 months away. So I'm doing the same amount of work, but what's happening to my results? They're higher, right? But, but here's what happens with so many agents it, is they start down this path, okay? And we get to right here. And they think they should be here, but they're only here. And so what do they do? Quit. Get frustrated and give up. Yeah. Get discouraged. Yeah, they get discouraged. And, and even if they give up temporarily, um, they, 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 they make, this isn't working for me, da, da, da. They, they, they go away, they get refocused, they get clear mind, and they come back and, and they want to go after it again. Or they decide, you know what, door knocking's not working. I'm going to go try open houses. Working my database isn't working. I'm going to go pay Zillow for leads. Okay. Doesn't matter what it is, but when we switch to doing something different and, and we take that, that effort off of what we've been doing, where do we go? Back Start over. And then we have that same curve again, and then they get frustrated, they quit, and they're back to zero again. And they never benefit from that, that big curve at the end of, of the hockey stick, okay? So we say that you need to be impatiently patient. I need to be impatient. I need to know that I have to do that work every single day. That, that can't wait. And, and, and I don't care if it's three phone calls or 20 phone calls, whatever it is you need to do, you have to be impatient. You can't put that off. You can't say, okay, well, I'm going to take two weeks off, okay, and, and then come back to it because we lose all of our momentum then, okay? We have to be impatient in our actions, but we have to be patient with our results, because that, that big curve is going to come at the end. And, and I have right now in the coaching program some great examples. of um, I, I have an agent right now that uh, she has been go, go, go uh, since she got here and, and has been so plugged in and so active and, and, and engaged. And it took her five months to close her first deal um, and then it was a couple of months later to close her seventh her second deal um, so she's seven months in and she sold two houses okay but she's about to cap in her first year with her closing that's uh, next week okay so she she's in her 11th month okay where did all her results come at, at the end of the curve yeah she had to keep doing it and keep going it and have faith that, that the results were going to be there. And now it's paid off. And guess what? She has momentum in her business this year. So next year, it won't be a business that just caps, okay? Because it's not going to take her seven months after she rolls over to get two deals, right? She's in production day one. So what's her year next year look like? She, she's going to go from doing 1.8 you know, million to next year, she's going to be at 3 million something. 
And, and that's if things don't improve on the path that she's on, that they could get even better than that. Um, so, so be impatient with patient. Does that make sense? Somebody say yes. 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 Love it. All right. And then the last one, surround yourself with good people. Okay. Amen. Uh, do what? I said amen. Yeah. J Jim Rohn says you are the average of the, oh, I left a word out. Uh, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Okay. The average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I want to challenge you guys. You, you guys don't have to speak up. I just want you to kind of think this through. So think about the five people you spend the most time with. Okay. And consider for a second, what's their average income? Okay. Don't have to tell me. Is your income close to that? Do most millionaires hang out with people that make 25000 a year? No. Who are, they hang out with? no. Who are they hanging out with? The other people that are some billionaires. Yeah. People that make 150000 a year, you know, are they hanging out with billionaires? No. You know. so, so understand, and, and that's just looking at the financials, okay? But, but think about how you treat people, the types of relationships you have, okay? Your, your uh, religion or morality, um, your, uh, your, your fitness level, okay? Do, uh, uh, so do, do people that are heavy set and, and have a sedentary lifestyle, uh, do they hang out with uh, skinny marathon runners typically? Nope. No, okay? So, so I tell you this, so, so you guys take a look at your life and, and who you choose to surround yourself with, okay? Should we surround ourselves with people that aren't doing as well as we want to do, okay? Which for, for some people understand, they choose to surround themselves with people that, that have challenges in their world. Why? Because they always want to feel like they're at the top of the list. They want to feel the like they're at the top. The people, yeah. Or they're succeeding when they're really not. So, so let me ask you guys, if, is it easier for you to pull somebody up the ladder or for someone to pull you off the ladder? Easier to be pulled off. Yeah. Okay, so even if sometimes those people that, that are in our world that, that aren't living the life that we would want for ourselves, but we continue to associate with them because we tell ourselves that we want to help them, okay, um, are, what's more likely to happen? That, that we help them lift them up? Or they pull you down. They pull you down. They pull you down. And, and, and guys, we've seen it happen before. You know, when, when somebody starts experiencing success, okay, who shows up in their world? The haters. All the negative. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and those can even be people in our family. Those can be people that we've called friends before. Okay, so, so understand that there's going to come a time that if we want to step out of the life we're in and, and, and step into the life we want to, we have to make some hard choices about who we surround ourselves with. Okay, and, and going back to the, the one we looked at several slides ago, when I say get plugged into the market center, one of the things I want you to consider is if you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, 
and you want to be a successful real estate agent, who should you surround yourself with? The top performers in the market. Then. That is exactly right. All right. I mean, when you put it that way, it sounds really simple, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. And 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 understand, guys. I, I, th this just shows up over and over again in so many ways. Um, I want you to imagine for a second that you're walking down the sidewalk. Okay. And somebody is walking beside you, okay? And they're walking a little bit faster than you. What's your tendency? Kind of try to catch up to them. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that analogy is so true in our lives. If we surround ourselves with people that are headed in the direction we're going, and they're a little bit ahead of us, or they're moving a little bit faster, what are we going to want to do? Catch up. Keep the pace. Catch up. Pace. Yeah. Okay. That's the reason you guys feel so good when you come to these classes and you leave, because we're all looking in the same direction. We're all moving in the same direction. We've got people around us that want the same thing, and, and, and we can inspire each other. We can learn from each other. We can encourage each other. That's the type of environment you want to be in, okay? And, and those people in your world that aren't doing that, we don't have to quit loving, right? But do we have to spend our time with them? Yes. Yes? <laughs> no, no, well, you, when you say that, I'm sorry. I'm Please sorry. don't have to under your roof or not. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, if they're your family, I'm sorry, I may have not heard your whole question, but so, some, you know, it's it, hard to kind of like ignore family or and it know. is no, it's not. And, and so some, making boundaries. So that's what I say. Sometimes you have to set some boundaries. Sometimes you have to put some. Well, yeah. Some sometimes you yeah. just spend less time with them. Okay, um, but but that is the challenge. You, you, yeah it is it is and and so just just keep in mind no. you know is, is the time spent with them lifting you up or is it pulling you down and, and if okay. it's pulling you down leave you know I, I, we can still love them we're just gonna love them from a distance that's right okay so well guys that 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 was 15 There's the list. Act like a business. Get plugged in. Be a continuous student. Have written goals. Embrace, embrace coaching. Be curious and ask questions. Know your market. Be known. Come from contribution. Build and maintain your database. Lead generate. Practice your scripts. Time block. Be impatiently patient. Surround yourself with good people. You may have heard all of these before, uh, but are there any that you had not heard before? Yeah. So, wh wh which one spoke to you in your place where you are right now in your life tonight? For me, be with people who, um, who the energy is matched or exceeds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, people you know, and that's whether it's your family members or not. You know, yeah. and I. I want to give a quick little story, um, like during the pandemic, one of my sisters, she has a, um, her master's in education and stuff, but she started a business. And that made me be like, dang, Val, what you doing? You know, you're making a hundred something a year, but is it fulfilling? Is it something you really want to do? But all of my sisters have their own businesses. All of us have our own businesses. And... You, you, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's your family, we got to get this. Like, we got to get this for generational wealth, for being examples to our children, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. it's so yeah. important to be with people who make you better and make you want to yes. be better and do better. So. I, I absolutely nail on the head with that one. I think that's my biggest thing, too. I mean, 
we're all here obviously because we're kind of dual career thing and for me working in a you know a, re a regular job a bill paying job right now and then being a single parent and not really having it's hard you know because you got to do that 7 30 to 5 30 every day yeah and then you get off work and it's just me in my house with my with my kids you know it's it's already it's limited um and it's hard to find not that I don't have positive friends but you know finding this positivity in this real estate world that when I can catch glimpses you know, uh, our YouTube things of like the meetings and stuff that go on at KW during the day. And it's just like a couple of times I've been there. It's just so infectious. And yeah. I yeah. crave yeah. that. I come from a leadership background and I crave that. And, you know, I it, there's so much value in being around like-minded people um, to pour into you. And it's it's hard when you don't, it's hard when you struggle to find that. Yeah. Um, branching into a new career and a new world. Um, it, it's, it makes it a little hard and it's, and it does become very discouraging at times. So well, anytime you need to pick me up or lift me up, Heather, you give us a call because we, we are, we are all on the same boat, rowing in the same direction. And, and we're glad to have you here and, and want to help you get to your destination as well. Thanks. And Trey is there for real. <laughs> well, listen, I, I it, you know, I thanks for letting me jump on late tonight. And I've kind of missed the first couple of these because I got my license, was gung ho and ready to roll and, and just so passionate about this. And then COVID and then the current job I had, job lo loss, I caught COVID. And this has all been within the last two months. And then I went through a period of like, just what next? And it's, like I said, when you're stuck at another job that you have to work all day, and that's why we're all here is because we're trying to get better and, and do more. It's hard. It is. It's, it, it, you know, I've reached out to a couple of them. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm discouraged. What do I do? Um, where do I start? So um, anyway. No, very good. I don't know if you saw the post. Valerie said you got this girl. Oh, <laughs> Hi, this is um Tony. Um, hey, Tony. You know, I have my license going on now. Well, no, actually, it's yes, yeah, coming up on two years. And just like um the person that just spoke, Heather. um Heather, um I. You know, I was, when I first got it, my license, I had met with Trey. I joined the coaching program. I'm still in the coaching program. I was just, I attended Ignite. I mean, I was I was ready. I got my cards. I got my picture taken. I was so, you know, gun ho And then, like, really all of these 15, all of them spoke to me. But, and I've heard them just about all of them before. Um... But, you know, life happens. I do have a full-time job, family, and I just it's, it's really so hard to get organized. But one thing, though, Trey, that you do say, when I stay connected with in the, in, in the classes and training, coaching and stuff, I do get more, I'm more, I'm more motivated, like tonight, um, you know. So I try to do a 10 more as I can because I do have an advantage to be still teleworking. Sure. And so that is one thing I really want to try to take advantage of. And it, I thought it was going to be easy. And it, it is better than me going in the office, but it's still, I still find it challenging. But um, to surround yourself with good people. Yeah. Um, the lead generator, that was just, I have heard that over and over again. <laughs> I do need to do more of that. Um, and you'll continue to hear more of it, I promise. Yeah, and yeah, and time blocking and the database. Yep. And, the database. And, and guys, what, what, what I'll close with is, you know, this isn't easy, okay? A lot of this is simple, but it's not easy. 
And, and, and so the, the, the last little bit of encouragement I want to give you guys tonight is, is keep in mind, it's about progress, not perfection. Okay. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be a rock star in all of these categories. You know, I am so intentional about the things that I do and I'm still not an expert in all of these areas. You know, this is my full-time world and, and I still have to work on getting better and better in, in each of these areas. And as long as I'm growing, I'm happy, right? If, if I can just get 1% better every day, uh, that's monumental. And so pick the area where you need the help the most and put a little time in that. And, and then a week or two from now, pick another area and put a little time into that, okay? But we're not gonna wake up tomorrow and, and, and be crushing it, okay? But keep moving one foot in front of the other, get, getting close to our goals, closer to being the people we wanna be, uh, closer to being the agents we wanna be, uh, closer to living the lifestyle we wanna live. And, uh, and that'll make for a happy life. So. Any last minute comments, questions, feedback? For me, time? time blocking, it's just she get time blocking for me is my biggest, biggest issue. Because I really I know what I need to do in order to I'd say be successful, but I I'm like, okay, how do I time block when every single day? my schedule is different. So, but do you find out that morning what your schedule is or do you get your schedule by the week? I mean, I, I get a schedule probably like for a, possibly like possibly for a whole month, but it changes. So, and, and my with delays, too. go ahead. So, and, and to give you a great example, so I, I sit down at the beginning of every single month, Valerie, because um, you, you've got to consider during my day, sometimes we're teaching Ignite, sometimes we aren't. Sometimes mm -hmm. Bold's here, sometimes it's not. Sometimes Keller Williams Atlanta Partners has leadership meetings, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we've got family reunion or mega camp. Sometimes I'm on vacation, right? Sometimes I've got kids' responsibilities and doctor's appointments. But what I do is, is I know there's certain things that I have to get done every single week, okay? And, and I've built those into my calendar, and, and I move them around, okay? So if I find out that, you know, well, this, this month I'm working on Mondays, not on Tuesdays, Whereas last time it was Monday evening. Well, now the stuff that I used to do on Mondays, I do on Tuesdays. And the stuff I did on Tuesdays, I do on Mondays. Okay. Does, does, does that make sense? I mean, I can mm -hmm. show you if, if you go back. Let's see, do I have that in a video? I think I, think I reviewed my calendar in the first, if, if you go to the, the coaching channel, Go back and watch the very first dual career agent workshop. Um, mm -hmm. I walk through how I build my calendar, and and I, and I show you how it's color coded, how I move things around, and how I've already uh, singled certain activities out that have to happen every week. So I, I I have to meet for me to hit my goals. I need to have five recruiting appointments a week. Okay. But never are those recruiting appointments at the same time, you know. And I don't know who my recruiting appointments are going to be in December. But if you go look at my December calendar right now, I've got five recruiting appointments in there every single week. As I have conversations with people and, and we set appointments, I then turn that slot into an appointment. And I may have to move it. I may have to shift it, Okay. I've got 11.30 on Monday, 2 o'clock on Tuesday, 10 a.m. on Friday are the three available appointments. I talk to you, and, and the only time you have available to meet is 
Thursday at 6 p.m. and I don't have another commitment at Thursday at 6 p.m., well, I'll grab that Monday morning appointment and move it to Thursday night, okay? Because I knew mm -hmm. I had to have that appointment this week. I just got to fill all my slots up. So same thing with your, you know, for me, my role is a little bit different, but the process is the same. For you, you need to do X number of hours of lead generation a week, okay, to hit your goals. And, and, and that's going to be goal dependent for you, okay? You want to do five houses, it's going to be one level. If you want to do 15 houses, it'll be another. You want to do 25, it, it'll be another number of hours of lead generation you need to do. Put that time on your calendar in one and two hour blocks, okay, to add up to whatever that needs to be, okay? If you need to do five hours of lead generation, well, maybe put three one hour blocks and one two hour block on your calendar for lead generation and, and have it where it repeats every week, okay? Put it where it fits on your calendar this week and set it up as a repeating appointment every week. Well, now I'm going to go look at next week's schedule and I'm going to see, oops, well, that creates a conflict. I can't, even though I could do it at 11 o'clock on Monday this week, next week, I'm going to be in Spain. <laughs> move it over to Tuesday afternoon or move it to Sunday afternoon. It doesn't matter where I move it to. I just can't erase it. I need five hours of lead generation to hit my goal. Does that make sense? Does that help the time blocking idea? It does. Okay. And I could sit down and help you with it. Get yourself on my calendar and let's sit down and build your calendar. Okay. Okay. I'm glad to help with that. All right, guys. Well, does anybody have anything else? Or are, we, are we safe to wrap it up for the evening? Thank you. Yeah, we're fine. Thank you so much, Trey. Oh, you were so welcome, Tony. I'm so glad you were here tonight. Heather, glad to see you. She, she glad to have you. Have, glad to see you twice today. That was an unexpected <laughs> pleasure. Hey, where was Thanks for letting me jump on late. What was that, Heather? Thanks for letting me jump on late. Oh, my, my pleasure. Glad to have you come anytime. So, uh, ra rather you get half of it than none of it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, Trey. Call See you guys. Fun. Call me, text right. me, email me if you need me. All right. Okay, thank bye. you. Have a good night, ladies. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.